On today's episode, Liz and I talk all about relationship resolutions and starting off the new year committed to intentionally trying new things to strengthen your relationship connection. From managing differences to fidelity with finances, we offer all kinds of small and simple things you can try in your own marriage to strengthen your marriage connection in 2023. We hope you enjoy the show. Hey friends, happy new year. Welcome to another episode of the Stronger Marriage Connection. The doctors are in. I'm Dr. Dave here at Utah State University alongside Dr. Liz Hale, our clinical psychologist. And our mission, our aim is really to bring you the best resources and research, some tips and some tools to help you have the marriage of your dreams. Liz, happy new year, my friend. How are you doing? Happy new year, Dave. And to all of our listeners here on Stronger Marriage Connection 2023. How about that, right? Yeah. And it's always that time of year when some people make New Year's resolutions in their life. Did you notice that I said make? And not keep, Dave. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I'm speaking of myself, quite honestly. My 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 favorite New Year's resolution. Do you want to guess what it is? Every year I make the same resolution. Any ideas? Is it to make no more resolutions? Yes. I don't know what it is. Yes, you know me so well. It's to not make any New Year's resolutions. And that kind of sounds a little bit like, you know, I'm no and I'm no fun and not not hopeful, but actually I do. I love new beginnings. I love the beginning of a new year. I love the beginning of a new month, a new week, a new day even a new moment. It's a, it's a perfect time for a do-over at any particular time. I'm, I'm always striving to try to do things better, but a New Year's resolution for me just feels kind of heavy. And I know you looked this up actually, Dave, and some research suggests that only about 23% of survey participants planned on making New Year's resolution this year, and only six to 9% actually keep them. I would be in that six to 9%, my friend. Yeah. And you and I think, yeah, a lot of other um, people as well, they struggle with with resolution. So I thought today we could talk about um, maybe we can increase that number if we focus dialed in specifically on relationship uh, resolutions or things that we can do. We can at least aim to do a little bit. Maybe it's a little less of this year, a little bit more of this year. Um all right. So, but before Liz, I wanted to quiz Liz. Do you see there? Quiz Liz. I'm going to quiz Liz today on a few little things related to relationship resolutions. So, Liz, in your mind, um, what do you think are some of the most common New Year's resolutions that people make? Oh, I think one I always hear from family and friends. I even heard from my own sweet husband, Liz, at the beginning of the year. You know, I, he's not going to wait, you know, till December 1st. We're not going to start. It's the beginning of the year. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to be more more strategic, you know, and more serious about it. So that's probably the number one, I would guess. Lose weight. You, you are right. It is. It, it, it's health. It's, yeah, I want to eat better. I want to lose weight. I'm going to hit the gym again. You know, gym passes. All those sales go skyrocketing for like two weeks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Not for going. laughs> I've been there. I've done that. So I'm not oh, criticizing I I anybody. I tell you, I've done yeah. that. Yeah. Yep. Well, uh, others, what do you think are some other top resolutions that people make? Maybe not necessarily keep, but what are some popular ones? Well, I'm not quite sure. Let's see. Uh, maybe it's uh, going back to school. Um, gosh, I don't, I don't know what else besides diet and exercise. Yeah. Yeah. Those are some big ones. Actually, kind of um, education going back yeah. and improving. That one's lower down on the, on the list. But number two depends on the, on which survey you look at. Yeah. What's that? But That's really, another common one is money, getting out of debt, spending less. Getting on a budget. I think that's super helpful because many people go into debt. You know, it's Christmas time and celebration of the holidays and go into debts. Ah, and that sheer panic, right? That sheer panic that follows. We get a little, we go a little too crazy sometimes. It's easy to, to, to go outside your budget during the holidays. You just kind of get that momentum built and the sales and the happiness and wanting to spread joy and be generous. Ah, I understand that too. Which is all, yeah, good, important, you know, things and the adrenaline gets going, but yeah, I'd be able to then realistically think, okay, we need to get back on a, on a budget. So that's pretty common. But number three in some list is improving relationships, more family time, growing closer to family and extended family and couple relationship. So I thought that, um, we would spend some time talking about relationship resolutions. Interestingly, though, this this one, resolution is another common one. It's, it's I want to spend less time on social media. Oh, that one I didn't love really that. exist. 
a decade ago, but that one is one. 21% in one survey said I'm going to spend Ooh. less time. I think that's so it. hopeful. That's so encouraging, isn't it? I think so too. And you know, I have, I got to tell you, you know, I don't know about yeah. you and your phone, but I have a love-hate relationship with my phone. It's yeah. so crazy. I, I want to leave it behind sometimes. And then I'm always regretful when I leave it behind, you know, because yeah. I, I lose Ben in the store. I can't find him or I can't mm -hmm. check on something real quick. I've heard from Dave about the next podcast. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I always regret not having it, but I just, ugh, I struggle with it. Do you feel the same yeah. way? I, I, I do. I, I'm gonna just going to be honest. I, I do. Um, it is. It's like with me all the time. And if when I'm sleeping, it's just sitting by my bedside. <laughs> you know, first thing I look at when we wake up. So it is. I think that's a good one. We talked about technoference with Brandon McDaniel on a previous episode. So if our listeners have not listened to that one on technoference and you're thinking like, oh, I need to spend less time on social media, go listen to that. So uh, Maybe I need to categorize. I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do about that phone. But I myself am going to be working on that in 2023. Maybe not a news resolution, but it's going to be a concerted effort because I realize how often I am on that darn thing. Yep. Yeah. Clients will text me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I have a, I have a mm -hmm. class I take and those notes are on that phone and those relationships. Uh, it just goes on and on. So Yeah, it's balance. It's about balance, yep. I think. Yep. So let's, let's do this. Let's dive a little bit deeper into um, some specific things, some relationship resolutions. I think we have some ideas that each of us would like to share and talk about on, on today's episode. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think of a segment we did on the power of regrets. I love that segment, by the way. I just thought, I think that um, Daniel Pink was just brilliant in writing that. It's help, looking backward helps us move forward, Right. A precursor to considering new year relationship resolutions is to examine old year relationship regrets. And I think we all have them. I certainly do. What are your relationship regrets of 2022? Dear friends here on Stronger Marriage Connection, try and list your three relationship regrets of last year. Do you regret not having as much fun together as a couple? Or maybe there's some bigger regrets like getting into unwanted unwarranted even financial debt or disconnecting from one or the other's family or making a poor personal decision that left your partner feeling betrayed and devastated. Regrets are not the end of the world. We don't want to have no regrets because regrets teach us what we value the most. So perhaps a relationship resolution for 2023 would be to be more hopeful in our relationship. Whatever we focus on grows we're going to remove the word divorce, let's say, from harsh conversations. I may feel like leaving, but I'm not going to. There are some areas we can draw a line in the sand and maintain a firm resolve. Removing the threat of divorce, I think, is one of them. There are some things, even as mere mortal humans, that we can be pretty darn near perfect in. And I think not uttering that D word divorce would be one of them. Would you agree? Yeah, you know, I think... Um, we're, we're talking about healthy relationships, right? If they're severe and there's, you know, abuse, we've talked about that in the past, but assuming that there's some, you know, two people want to work on things, sure. let's, let's just yeah. eliminate that. I think that's a great idea and say, Hey, we're, we're committed. Let's, mm -hmm. let's stay in this. Let's stay loyal and true. And isn't that the difference? I think we've learned that in our podcast these six months, right? Is that it's all about commitment mm -hmm. when somebody's all the way in, it takes two people being all the way in where that option is not even an option. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I love that concept of that all in, all in marriage, that all in relationship. So I think a template, Liz, for us to, um, as we share some relationship resolutions for folks, there's, we, we both are big John Gottman fans and the, the books, the information that he has shared. He's written a book called Eight Dates. Uh, he talks about these essential conversations for a lifetime of love. And we're big fans of, of Gottman's and his work. Um, our hope today is that at least one of these important topics may motivate you and your partner or spouse in 2023. And ultimately, these are focused on helping you, of course, develop a stronger marriage connection. So here we go with a few more relationship resolutions to think about. All right. At the top of the list, Liz, I include um, fun and adventure. I just think that this is so important in relationships because... Um, it's, it's going to vary from, from couple to couple. There's going to be um, personality, you know, there can be preferences, whether we like the camping and outdoors and all that, but finding something that you enjoy doing. It could be going to a play. For my parents, for example, 
And then they're older, um, but they decided in their retirement years to buy a razor, you know, one of these little side by side. And they have this little razor gang and they go up in the mountains. They'll go across Utah and just enjoy getting it when the weather is, is good. They get out and they do things with this group of friends. I love it. I have a sister, um, a recent empty nester, and her and her husband, they live in Idaho, and they just have these intentional um, getaways that they go. They plan little trips, or if he has a work trip, then she goes along. They have a boat, and they do fun, enjoyable things. And so whatever stage of life that you are in, if you're newlywed or retired empty nester, making that intentional. We're going to get out. We're going to do more um, more things. My wife and I, for example, we have we plan what's called a getaway after the holiday. It's a lot of stress, a lot of kind of craziness. And it's just a little weekend that's, that's just us. Um, after things calm down, we, we go in, in January. So I think that that's really uh, important. More date nights, more intentional date nights, more planning and having fun and adventure. What do you think? Oh, I think that's really very cool. I This category of fun and adventure is really interesting. When Drs. John and Julie Gottman talk about it, they say that this is the one category that couples forget about most. Probably earlier on, maybe the biggest complaint of all those principles in the eight dates, it, it is this one that suffers the most, that we neglect, and that could also renew us the most as well. You know, I have this thought, if, if I were to have any kind of resolution for the new year, it really is to bring fun into the ordinary. I think fun is is a, an attitude. I don't think I'm all that fun. I don't really think I'm this goddess of fun and light as much as I'd like to be. A friend of mine often coins that term, Laura Doyle. I love that. Um, so I want to bring a little bit more lightness and fun, even when we go to Home Depot. You know, I might run an errand with my husband or we're going to Costco. I, I just think wherever I could go, I could be a little lighter, a little f- more fun. That's my goal. <laughs> yeah. Liz, I like that. Yeah. I think that's a great attitude. I don't think it is, you know, we're going to go on a cruise that, and those things are fun, <laughs> yeah. but it could be we're going to have to go on a cruise to Home Depot or Lowe. Good for people who go on cruises and travel, right? The big things are cool. But the day in and the day out, we forget to dance in the kitchen. You know, we forget to turn up that music and, you know, do a little terms of an affection, a little little slap on the tush here and there. You know, uh, it's just, it's just, we're just grateful to be alive. And, and I think we need to put fun in, in everyday life. Yeah. Fun in the function, right? Not the dysfunction. <laughs> yeah, I do love that. So if this resonates with you, our listeners right now, just thinking about, you know what, I, I want to do more of that. Then it's it's intentionality. Sit down, talk about it and plan it. Um, and yeah, it can be busy if you've got kids and we're going here Tuesday nights and Thursday nights and, and running around, but make make time for just the, the two of you. Uh, another area that can strengthen couple connection, I, I like to call it maybe just the small and simple things. I think that I, I believe in this, I, I call it the law of least effort that in relationships after, you know, we do so much courting and the beginning of relationships and things are fun and exciting. And then we, we, in my mind, we tend to slide into this law of least effort where it's just enough to kind of get by. If I can just give a minimal effort in our relationship, just to kind of keep things going. I don't, I, that, and that's hard because I think all of us slide into that. So I'm, I'm a bigger fan of what I call the law of little things. And so I'm going to suggest just a couple of little things just for our listeners to consider as a relationship resolution. Perhaps one is going to bed at the same time. I just know people who have their kind of interests or maybe one stays up later, goes downstairs and watches this or that, or one's watching the news, another one's out on their computer, on their phone. There's something about uh, going to bed at the same same time. Maybe you're not going to sleep at the same time, but you're in there together, that you're checking in, that maybe you, you know put the phones down for a minute. Just talk about your day for, for a few minutes. Um, so I, I think that's an important one. So if that resonates with our listeners, try that. Going to bed, getting ready for bed, you're talking, maybe you're brushing your teeth or whatever, and you're you're just connecting at the at the end of the day. And part of that I think is maybe uh, unplugging unplugging um we we talked about that and our need to unplug a little bit more often but that takes again this intentionality that like no right now is relationship time where i'm at the table i'm going to put my phone down and i'm going to talk and engage you know going bed to bed at the same time is such a a great concept when it works and yet for so many couples it doesn't right our schedules are off um so we're we're late late night owls or late owls or early morning Molly's or whatever you want to say it. Um, and my, my husband and I are a little bit like that. 
So I think sometimes we have to try even a little bit harder to make that connection at the end of the day, to make sure that we say good night, that we kiss, that we hug, that we talk about maybe matters of the next day, what's going on. So make some connection. Maybe you can cuddle and lay down a little bit together while then the other person gets up and finishes their movie or their book. Um, I think it is just that matter of taking the time to make the the little things happen, those small connections. I think, you know, couples really can benefit and even families of eating meals together. And that's not always easy. Families are really busy this day and age. So perhaps maybe that is on the weekends. If so, make a real concerted effort that that those are the meals we're really going to all be together. But if it is just the two of you as couples and empty nesters, I think it is crucial to try to find time to to eat together and to sit down even if we're off, let's say I, I come home late sometimes from late couples and Ben will, at least my husband's will sit down and at least visit with me while I eat, right? He, he ate much earlier in the night. So it's nice just to even have that connection over a meal, whether both of you are eating or just one of you is eating. Exercising as a couple, I think can be so, so fun. That doesn't necessarily work in, in our relationship. I like to do different things and then than my husband does. I, but I was working with a couple recently and they were on this great routine, believe it or not, of four o'clock AM morning workouts. And then something happened at the gym. He kept going, the husband kept going and she joined a new gym, which she didn't like nearly as much. But together in session, she was saying, you know what? I, I really miss working out with you. I thought we did better. We could motivate each other. It was fun to look across the room and see you, you know, even though we didn't do the same routines, I could see you and wave. And when they left, she was really thinking of reconsidering going back to the gym. And I just think that is wonderful. Sometimes I'll say to my husband, will you walk me today? <laughs> Sounds like an animal, right? But will you walk me? Because sometimes I'm not motivated to get out and do it. And I always love when he's willing to help me get out and walk. Sometimes I need that push myself. Yeah. Yeah, that's great, Liz. I think and I want to come in a couple of things you said. One is some of these are not going to work, you know, for some people, or they maybe let's twist this one a little bit way so it does fit. It could be going for a walk, or it could be, you know, sometimes my wife, she just say, hey, you know, come to the store. I just have some returns to do. And I'm like, why would I want to do that? But then I think, oh, it, it's not about the returns for her. It's about <laughs> being in the car and talking and connecting. So, yeah, more intense. We'll be right back after this brief message. And we're back. Well, let's dive right in. Like part of what we're talking about today is really this um, awareness, this intentional awareness. Even the scholars, they call it attunement. When we can attune with the other person. When we're all kind of on the same page. Uh, that is, is what we're talking about in order to make these things work. It, it, it does. Sometimes it's this intentionality of sitting down and saying, hey, yes, let's go to the gym or this, or let's play pickleball, or hey, should we go for a walk or just go for a drive or an ice cream? It's this intentionality. So I, I think that's a, a big part of this. Another, I'd like to talk about um, another concept called, I, like, I call it celebrating the small wins and share, sharing the good news. And part of that attunement is just being aware of what's going on in our in our partner's life. What do they have going on? that day and checking in whether it's a text um and when they they've something at work has has happened great uh they've got a promotion or just being able to celebrate the good part of the day in the shram fam one of the things that we do before we go to bed is, is we share a happy thought i share one my wife shares one the kids just the best part of the day and i think that being able to be in tune and checking in what made them happy that day what are they willing to celebrate i think is um is an important piece. Part of that is, is just this checking in. I'm a big fan of, of checking in. Um, my wife is great with that. She'll just send me a little, little text and it says, Oh, Hey, hey love you so much. Have a great day. Or just this morning, honestly, I just left a little sticky note. I mean, she's coming home from the gym and I had some meetings. So I built her a little sticky note where I know that she would see that, but it, it's just those small little things. Yeah. Over and over that I think are those deposits in that, that relationship account. Yeah, I think you say, say such a good point. I feel like couples get very discouraged when they come in. They think, oh, and oftentimes I hear this. Are we the worst couple you've ever met? Right. Oh. Aren't we just like the worst? Sure, you know, they feel very self-conscious and, and so vulnerable. You know, there's just, there's no greater honor day when then when then 
than when someone comes in and trusts you with that level of intimacy. You know, maybe some of the deep secrets, they don't want anyone to know. And I, I think it's so encouraging that to say, you know, let's just start with some small things. Let's even start with please and thank you. Let's just start with the simple kindnesses of life again. And it's interesting how those small things start to build and make a, a huge difference. Small things often. I, I think you're spot on. Some of that can be expressing more gratitude, right? Regularly in different ways. I have a, a friend who says, drop and give me 10. And she's talking about 10 gratitudes when she gets irritated with her husband. She, she stops and thinks about 10 things she's grateful for for him. And then she tells him, you know, she spills them out. Um, it is just the wonderful antidote, I think, to discouragement. Whatever we focus on grows. More random acts of kindness, compassion is certainly the lifeblood of relationships. And it's interesting that when we change our behavior, our feelings follow. Or when I even change my languaging, my, my own inner ear is always eavesdropping. So when I try to come across kinder than maybe my heart feels, I start to soften that heart. Because then I, I like the sound then of, of my voice. It's like, oh, I really do feel that way towards him. You know, and it does change with, with ourselves within. More expressions of affection and love. I don't, I don't think we can ever touch too much. You know, certainly wanted touch, right? I, I do remember, it wasn't necessarily a New Year's resolution, because as you know, I'm a little opposed to saying this is my New Year's resolution. But I did make an, uh, a concerted effort this past year to say yes more often. I mean, yes, you know, not just in physical intimacy, but yes, when do you wanna, when my husband would say, do you want to go with me to, to run an errand or Home Depot? Or will you go with me to my sister's house? I've really tried to say yes a lot more. Even in my, if I'm in my house shoes, I'll just say yes. Let's go. Let's go to the neighbor's house. Let's go drop those things off. Um, it just it feels better because I can get stubborn. Yeah. Yeah. I love that, <laughs> Liz. I think we all can. And so I think our listeners are thinking, man, if I could just tweak some of these small things, I even once counsel, uh, I, I don't counsel, people come for me with counsel. So I'm not saying this as a counselor, right? But I, I once counseled a couple, you know what? I, I hear you often just saying each other's names, like Mark or Mary, this isn't the real names. I'm like, Mark, 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 or Mary, Mary, Mary. I'm like, what about even changing that up to a term of endearment? Be like, hey, honey, honey. And you know, hey, babe, or those types of things. Because sometimes the, the nitpicking the nagging uh, and, and their name because no one else calls them honey or bait or shouldn't, but they might call them Mark or Mary. So I think that that's just something that the couples can, what are little, those little terms um, are, I think is important. I like you mentioned random acts of kindness, Liz. I think sometimes just maybe in the morning, if we can just take what 60 seconds and just pause and be still for a second and just ask, what can I do for my partner today? And then there'll be a thought, something will come in. I remember actually doing this and a thought came in, go scrape my wife's, uh, at the time we didn't have a garage and uh, go scrape my wife's windshield. You know, I know that she has an appointment. Let me go start the car for her. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna scrape it and get the, the snow off. It's those types of little things who we're not thinking about us, we're thinking about them. Those small little random acts of kindness go a long way. What can I do today to make my partner's life more worth living and then do that thing. I think that's brilliant. Um, yeah. What you had just said before that caught my attention as well. Mm. Um, oh. oh, the terms of endearment, like the, the honey Thank or the babe. That kind of, <laughs> terms of yeah. endearment. Yes, boy, was that short-term memory loss. Um, yeah, so I wanted to ask you, do you have a favorite term of endearment that your wife calls you? Um, you have a favorite? Ours both have kind of, it, it's always been honey. Oh, um, but once yeah. in a while I'll be, you know, Hey babe, should we go, you know, run this? Yeah. Because it's, it's almost not so natural that I don't even, um, yeah, you know, consciously think about it sure, because I sure. rarely call her by her first name. Oh, is do. that right? How about that? Yeah. You know, I love it. I, I love one and maybe we need to let each other know, let our partners know what we'd like best. Right. Sometimes we just, I mean, we don't even say anything, but I know that I'm in good shape with my husband when he calls me Lizzie girl. Okay, Lizzie girl. I don't know why I love that. Lizzie is kind of a family name that my close family members call me. But when he says Lizzie girl, I don't know why. I just love that. It just melts me. So I, I always encourage couples to find those terms of endearment, let each other know what you really value and, and kind of enjoy that. I don't mind my name either, but I love the others. So let's switch gears, my friend, and talk about another category, which is so crucial. 
It's conflict management. You know, we're never going to be conflict free because that's not life. You know, as the Gottman say, um, nearly almost 70 percent of our conflicts are perpetual. In other words, we're not going to resolve them. We're going to just find better ways to manage them that doesn't create damage that keeps keeps us feeling respectful. Yes. Yeah. I think that this, this one's huge because in a lot of relationships, this kind of makes or breaks and we get into these cycles, honestly. And so now, you know, if you're thinking I'm relationship resolution, I'm going to do better at this. I, here's a few tips and I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts. One is becoming less reactive and more responsive, if that makes sense. When I do um, lectures and I speak on this, I talk about not becoming a nuclear reactor and being more of a first responder, being able to respond instead of instead of react. So part of that is uh, watching our temper, our tongue, and our tone. I talk about those three, temper, tongue, and our tone. And um, being able to you know feel those feelings, but not follow those feelings as far as reacting to that. So uh, here's a tip, and the, the Gottmans have talked about this one as well. And that's a soft startup when we can just bring these up uh, gently instead of like, honey, you know, what were you doing? Or it's about time you're home or what were you thinking? When we, our tone goes up and the other person is going to to get defensive. I just think that um, not parenting our partner is another one that I that I often see, Liz. And that's this this nagging and do this and this and this. And you're like, hey, I actually just saw this in a parking lot. Um, so my wife and I grocery stores a couple weeks ago. And there's a, a couple interaction. And I, of course, me, you know, Dr. Dave just kind of listened as I was walking to my car and he said, Hey, I can do this myself. You're not my mom. I actually heard him say that. I just thought, Oh man, sometimes when we get into that conflict, if we can just remember, I like what Steve Stasen, Dr. Stasen, if you haven't listened to episode five or listeners, you got to go back and listen to that. He talked about acting on our values and not on our feelings. You know, your values, whether it's kindness, compassion, or humility, or uh, appreciation, positivity. Those are our values. Act on your values, not on your, your feelings. So um, one, one last type I'll throw in here when it comes to conflict, Liz, is aiming for understanding. Even if you don't agree, even if, you know, if it's political difference or if it's just some kind of silly little thing, um, just understand. Aim. If I can see this from my partner's perspective, it can create more compassion and, and even come up with, even in your mind, three reasons why they might be right just so we can see it from their perspective. And so maybe more understanding in 2023. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love those things. You know, we, we sweat the small stuff so, so often, right? We talk about stress a bit here on Stronger Marriage Connection and, and um, it really does hurt us. Stress just kills. And we have to find some way of managing that outside stress or it will come right in and come between us and become a wedge. So letting go of the small stuff, letting go of the grudges, being quick to forgive. I really encourage my couples to, to try to put things to rest, to try to come to a truce within an hour, certainly within the day. Do not let go. Do not let things go on past the day, but the, the, the faster, the better. It's like stretching any muscle, right? We just get good at it. Because remember, I, I love this person. Wait a minute. Even once my husband said to me, wait, wait a minute, Liz, I'm on your side, you know? <laughs> I'm on your side. You, you're kind of forgetting who I am. It's like, oh my gosh, you're right. Where was I going? I, I can easily kind of lose my mind unless I'm really focused on lightening up, using more humor and not taking things um, as seriously as possible. You know, I have this a bit of a, of a mantra when I'm in the car with my husband lately, because the car used to be a really big sticking point for us. He is a lot more assertive in his driving than I am. I'm really far more the, the far more superior driver, Dave. I just want you to know. Yeah, but, yeah in my career. mind, I am right. But yeah. then again, my husband—he's a professional driver, right? He has a commercial driver's license, and he just does things that I wouldn't do. <laughs> Let's just say it that way. So my new mantra is, "Honey, you are my safe and secure chauffeur. You are my safe and secure chauffeur." You know, and I, I. Because whatever, again, whatever you focus on grows. So that mantra really helps me start to feel a little bit more peaceful in the car. We've never gotten in an accident, knock on wood, right? Gratefully so. And um, he is my safe and secure chauffeur. So sometimes having mantras can really help change the situation. It can flip something from negative to positive. Like, wait a minute, that's not really true. That's not true. He's not always aggressive. My life is not threatened. Um, I always get there safely and securely. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a great perspective. And 
Um, something you mentioned made me remember a something I saw on social media, and it was someone's post, and it's it was simply, and I'll probably butcher this a little bit, but it is essentially, even if you disagree with someone, you don't have to confront them. You don't have to bring it up, even if you do disagree. And um, there's, I think, sometimes relationships could improve if one or both of us would just leave one or two things left unsaid. We don't have to put in that last little remark, that last little snark, that last little sarcastic thing, or the roll of the eyes, right? If we can just pause and and not re- react maybe to their reactions, because I think it's it's easy to be a jerk to a jerk, honestly, that we can react to a jerk by being a, being a jerk. Now, I, I say those names, but, and you get the point, the principle is, is pause. We don't have to, to launch back. And ultimately, the big picture for me is, People are more important than problems. So, yeah, it's really not, it's not the price. It's not worth the price of the intimacy, is it? To have the last word. It really is okay just to, oh, I'm going to zip my lips right there. It's not necessary. I have nothing to add that's positive (laughs) to this conversation. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and just say, you know, I hear you. Yeah, I get it. I hear you. Yeah, I love it. Not it's not who's right, but what is yeah, right. I hear you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's all I had to say. Um, all right, let's let's go to another one. I think this is an important one. That at least the research shows, Liz, that many couples have disagreements when it comes to financial, financial fidelity, uh, with its careers and spending and spending habits and secret accounts and all that kind of stuff. What do you think? Oh yeah. Oh boy, it's a big one, isn't it? It's. Um, I think every marriage faces it. Boy, just a couple last night, even in my session, everything was going great. (laughs) In other words, what I mean by that is they were having a nice, um, really trying to have some understanding about each other and uh, making apologies. And everything went fairly well in their discussion and dialogue. And she's leaning more and more in, actually, which is just so lovely to see until we started talking about money. Yeah, I think being able to come up with a system that works for each couple, but a system, having a system for some couples that might be um, quick and we use quick and there are couples, uh, Dave Ramsey, I call it Dave Ramsey, <laughs> uh, just being able to have some type of a plan at the beginning of our relationship. And when we were first married, we had an envelope system. We would just put cash in literally. And then when it's gone, it's gone. So no, having no secrets when it comes to um, finances. I love is, the Dave Ramsey system. Why do you call it Dave Ramsey? What, what are you saying? Oh, I call it Dave Ramsey with my oh, last name, Dave Ramsey. Oh, that's funny. I'm sorry. I missed <laughs> yeah. that whole thing. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, love I really think he's brilliant. Yeah. He talks about how paying off the whole mortgage is a new BMW, right? Yeah. That's I listen exactly to Dave Ramsey right. a lot. Um, the envelope system, I, I have many couples that are doing that. I, I just think he's really brilliant. There's something so satisfying, isn't there, about making a plan together of a budget and really being able to have each other's backs and to be able to keep your commitment. It just feels good. It feels good yeah. to stick to that budget that we've agreed on. Yeah, knowing where your money goes. That's an important one. A final area that our listeners and you and I might consider improving is in trust and commitment. And I think sometimes we think, oh, well, you know, as long as we're keeping our vows, we're not having an affair. But I think there's other areas of trust and commitment as well. Recently, a a CEO of a large company announced in a surprising big TED Talk that he had this life goal. And I was just really surprised by it, Dave. His life goal was to... Never look at pornography again. He actually said it just out there. How is he going to be successful? By speaking out, open, often, and publicly. His vulnerability and candor has made him successfully accountable. Isn't that something? Just saying, look, this is, this is my issue. I've struggled with it. And that is why um, I'm bringing it to you because I, I want to stop struggling it. And so when I come op- when I'm open with you, it helps me stick to my d- determination and my goal. I just thought that was brilliant. Sometimes when we keep things in, in hidden, right? In the dark secret, right? Like me not wanting to use that card that's going to ding on my husband's phone. Um, it, it can't help but elicit some shame and, and more cover up. But to be open to shine the light on those dark corners, that really is the key to being a successful human being and strengthening some of our weaknesses. Yeah, I think so, Liz. I love what you're saying because that that will eventually eat us away. And if it doesn't, what we'll try to do is rationalize it away. We'll use our brain to be like, no, you know, this is why trying to come up because our brain doesn't like to kind of feel that 
that guilt. And so I'm a big fan, no secrets. And whether it's finances or social media or this, just the little flirting or this and that, stay away from it. That it's just a, such a, um, such a struggle. Slippery, slip, slippery slope, isn't it? Slippery that, slope. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. It is. Once you kind of goes yeah. this, then our, we start kind of justifying. And before yeah. you know it, yeah, things are happening in your relationship that you don't, yeah. you never intended. You don't and it happens to good people, right? Good, good yes. people make mistakes. Yeah. And we, it happens one slippery slope step at a time. Not just one day we wake up saying today, I think I'm going to start that affair. But yeah, it does happen. No. Good people have affairs and, and couples can recover. But it is much easier to avoid it, you know, in the first place. Like you're saying. Yeah. That's right. So when we make better choices, we have better chances is what I like to say. Mm. So, um, man, I think overall, you know what? I, I love what the, some of the things that we've talked about. I hope that they're helpful for helpful for um, our listeners. These little things that we can do to strengthen our relationship connection. Liz, we yeah. end our episode every time by talking about a, a takeaway of the day or any other little you know nugget that you have here yeah. to close with from our discussion. What, if, what do you want our listeners to take away? Every day, every moment is an opportunity for a new start. You can begin right now. It's a new moment. Make the apology. Do the right thing. Um, let go of the grudge. Every every day, every moment is a chance to have a do-over. Yeah. I, I love that. And Liz, you're such a, an example of that. I appreciate that. I think my takeaway of the day is this, this idea of this intentionality of doing things purposefully, on purpose, maybe adding a few phrases in your relationship in 2023, such as I noticed, or I appreciate, mm -hmm. and then fill in the blank, or I absolutely love it when you, and then you fill in the blank, <laughs> and just letting our, our spouse partners know what we love, what we appreciate about them, yeah. that expressions of gratitude, compassion, and kindness are the, truly the, the lifeblood of, of relationships. So as, as we wrap up this episode um, and kick off this new year, we're excited about this new year. We have a lot of um, great guests, uh, more episodes that we're going to be launching here. So stay with us here at the Stronger Marriage Connection. Thanks for joining us on another, another episode and have a happy 2023. And remember, it's the small things that create a stronger marriage connection. See you soon. We'll see you. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, do us a favor and take a few minutes to subscribe to our podcast and the Utah Marriage Commission YouTube channel, where you can watch this and every episode of the show. When you hit the like button and leave a comment, your feedback helps us improve the show. And don't forget to share this episode with a friend. You can also follow and connect with us on Instagram at Stronger Marriage Life and on Facebook at Stronger Marriage. Be sure to share with us what topics you want us to explore or what you loved about today's episode. If you want even more resources to improve your relationship connection, visit our website at strongermarriage.org, where you'll find free workshops, webinars, relationship surveys, and more. Each episode of Stronger Marriage Connection is hosted and sponsored by the Utah Marriage Commission at Utah State University. Finally, a big thanks to our producers, Rex Polanis, Kirsten Wilson, and the team at Utah State University, and you, our audience. You make this show possible.